Hello and welcome, my name is Trismegistus and today we're going to be reading through and speculating about the latest Factorio Friday Facts. It's another really long one this week and uh, there'll be timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead or I'll put a timestamp so you can skip to the speculation if that's what you're most interested in. Friday Facts number 381, Space Platforms, posted by V. Hello, several Friday Facts ago we showed you what a space platform can look like, today we would like to explain how they work in a bit more detail. What are space platforms? Space platforms are little, or not, flying factories that act as the means of transportation between planets, both for items and players. Birth of a platform. You start by launching an item called Space Platform Starter Pack into space. The item is inserted into the rocket silo in a similar way to the satellite. We then got screen capture from the game, just showing this uh, and illustrating the um, starter pack icon. As the caption says, this rocket is carrying a space platform starter pack, as you can tell from looking at the alt mode overlay. Space Platform Hub The initial platform has only one structure, the Space Platform Hub. The hub is a one per platform central entity which stores both items for both construction and logistics, has logistics requests and a train-like schedule where planets act as stops. If the hub is destroyed, the entire platform is lost. The next screen capture shows the Space Platform Hub, and the caption says Space Platform Hub, the centerpiece of every space platform. Many of you could tell earlier that the graphics of the Space Platform Hub are a concept art placeholder, while the real version is being worked on. This of course was the central structure we saw in the previous reveal of Space Platforms, and as, as he says it's, it's artwork, there's actually a version, a screen capture later on that appears to be the, the thing in game. So I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to the next, I think it's the next picture. But but yes, it looks like this is what happens, you know, when you send up the starter kit, this is what goes up and is the basis for your space platform. Uh, and it's just the sort of central um, hub and, and kind of uh, logistics point for the individual platform. The inventory of the space platform hub is limited but so-called cargo bays can be constructed next to the hub to increase the capacity. We've then got a video illustrating this. Um, I will just read the caption and then we'll look at the video independently as it's a bit too zoomed in on this. The graphics aren't finished yet, but you can already see how the hub and cargo bays will visually attach. Joe Law's sanity is now somewhere deep in these pictures. If you find it, please send it back. This is the proper video as it were. I'll zoom this in so that you can sort of see it. In a, in a more detailed view. Uh, essentially what's happening here is the player is building um, some more space platforms, so extending the space platform and building these cargo hubs. The point that was being made I think about the graphics is you notice how they connect in different ways. So the first one that's built connects on the side to the left and then this one connects one tile to it, this one connects at the top and this one connects both on the side and at the top. So this one then connects multiple other connections. So it looks like it becomes an integrated piece as if it was, you know, all one structure, uh, which is really nice from a graphical point of view. I think also they make a point later on that the inventory is like single, the entire platform, and that helps to sell that. If these just connect together, it looks like one structure that you put items in. I mentioned before that on the previous picture, so this one, this was clearly the placeholder art which we all spotted in the previous Friday Facts, and this appears to be used throughout the other images, but here this looks like it's an in-game asset because this is much more 3D, much more part of the, the center. It may be still work in progress, but it is remarkably similar to um, the concept art, but, all, but looks like a real in-game entity. So. I suspect this may have been very late, you know, that they finished this maybe, and this is why it's not really used in any of the game screenshots. Uh, but it's just interesting to see it in game compared to the concept art version. Initially, we were trying a different system where the cargo bays would be separate entities and you would have to shuffle things around, but it was just a non-fun bookkeeping activity. So we just went with one big central inventory. How do things get to space platforms? The next part was clear and unchanged from the beginning. Rockets are used to bring items into platforms, and this part is the main price of delivering items into space or other planets. But the rest went through an evolution. The original plan was that it would be part of the logistics channel to transport and insert all the required items directly into the rocket silo. 
Everything in the silo would be available to the orbital logistics system, which pulls required items from available rocket silos. The problem was that the actual gameplay produced by this system proved to be incredibly annoying very quickly. The reason is that you need many different items in small quantities to build all the platform mini factory, and the only reasonable solution to do that was weird. You had to filter the inventory slots in the silo so each of the items would have a dedicated space and then bring every individual item to the silo. We've then got an in-game screenshot um, illustrating the point exactly, uh, a caption that says configuring this wasn't fun. On top of that, all the items had to be backed up in the silo and the chests. They've got the alt mode on. These are um, filter inserters. What they're talking about by filtering the rocket silo is, is like you can do with trains where you set a particular slot to be only accepting a particular type of item. I'm assuming it has more slots and it's not a single item per rock, a single type of item per rocket. But yeah, so what this is showing is that they've got a whole load of requester chests which are then inserting items into the rocket kind of as required. Uh, but yes, this is just illustrating the point that, um, you know, you've got a ridiculous amount of logistics going on and every one of these is going to be requesting items and then they're going into the rockets and you know it's an enormous amount of stuff um, to be managing and their point is that just well it just wasn't fun we needed a way out so we added three semi-separated features to fix this pain number one the rocket silo is directly connected to the logistics network and works as a requester chest number two the rocket silo can be configured using a checkbox to automatically request things needed by the platform above from the local logistics network. Note that this is only activated when the items are already present in the network in the needed quantities. When you are placing ghosts on the space platform, the space platform can be set to automatically request these items from the surface of the local planet. With these three things combined, you can just build ghosts on the platform and everything is done automatically, assuming you have the items already available in your logistics network. The important part is that you can still ignore the logistics network and stockpile the silos manually, which can be very practical in special situations, or basically required in some of the yet undisclosed Space Age content, but it is an exception. Asteroids as a resource. In space, you encounter asteroids which are both a resource and a hazard. They come in various sizes. Asteroid chunks are the tiniest and don't do any damage to the platform when they hit it. Chunks can also be caught by the mechanical tentacles of asteroid collectors to be processed into items. And this video just shows that in action. It's not anything new as such. We've uh, seen these grabber arms before. I still think they look amazing. I really hope this, um, and I think someone will probably do it as a mod, but I really hope we can have these attached to spider drones. I think they'd be really cool as like arms waving around, almost like, you know, um, War of the Worlds, where, you know, it's got the, the grabbing arms on a, a giant... Um, three-legged aren't they in, in, in War of the Worlds but I say it'd be really cool to have them on Spider. I don't think that'll be part of the base game as I say but it'd be really cool. Um, what we are seeing here is it's just grabbing all sorts of different types of asteroid. It, it'll go on to explain those in, in a little bit but, but yeah I don't think there's anything new as such here. Uh, it's just the, the grabber arms in action. There are three general asteroid types. One, metallic asteroids for iron ore used to produce gun turret ammunition and thruster oxide oxidizer. Carbonic asteroids for carbon, which is a new resource used on the platform to produce thruster fuel. Oxide asteroids for ice, which is melted into water, then used to produce thruster fuel and oxidizer. And a new machine called a crusher is used to process the asteroids. Later on, more resource types can be obtained from asteroids using advanced crushing recipes. So here's the video of the, the crushers in action. Um, this is one of the grabber arms. Filter inserters are putting the items onto appropriate belts. Uh, on the left here, this must be the metallic ones because the output is iron ore. The middle one appears to be the carbonic acid. Uh, carbonic acid appears to be the carbonic asteroids, uh, which this appears to be the new resource carbon coming out of the middle. Uh, and then the final one on the right is the what did it call them? Water asteroids, basically, you know, and that's putting ice chunks onto the onto the belt. As we suspected, what these white things are is is water ice, basically, so solid, you know, solid water. It can happen that the platform collects too many asteroids or some recipe byproducts just accumulate too much. Here's one simple feature that we love. You can dump items overboard with inserters. Next video just shows this in action. It's literally just a little loop of belt and some inserters are literally just dumping items into space. I'm assuming it just disappears. I'm assuming it because it looks like it fades out. I don't know if that's my imagination. 
I mean, obviously it fades there because the video loops, but I think it just disappears. This is just rubbish and it's more for visual. You can't pick it back up again. In the past, we've had multiple versions of ways of how to trash items from platforms, including having a special storage entity that was able to do that. It all got so complicated that in the end, we just went with the super simple solution. Space science in space. What if we produce space science packs on the space platform instead of by just sending satellites into space? Sounds cool on first sight because it fleshes out the space science pack into something more than just the imaginary satellites sent us research data from space. But there are even better reasons for it. In our initial version of space platforms, you would unlock all of their components immediately after the rocket silo. With that, you could go to explore other planets. This sounds great until you realize that the player isn't quite getting anything useful out of any of this until they have successfully brought science packs back from another planet. This means that you had to make the rocket silo and many rockets, build the space platform, travel to the other planet, solve the challenges of the planet and automate science packs and rocket production there. That is quite a lot of big steps to do and it reminds us of a similar pacing problem we already had in the past with the oil processing changes covered in Friday Facts 304 and 305. Just to note, those are the ones where they introduced the simple oil processing as only producing petroleum. You know, they made the decision to have a simple recipe that did something slightly less than the advanced recipe, which produced all three of the resources. The original version of Factorio, you know, the simple recipe produced all three you know, types of fluid, but it did so at a different ratio. So that's what they're talking about effectively. The, you know, they decided they needed more of a step change, a simpler, you know, halfway point, rather than having to do all those four big steps. So we tried to break this into smaller, manageable subparts, which wield some usefulness and reward on their own. This is helped by effectively having two tiers of space science packs. Satellites launched into space are still used to obtain the first space science packs, but you only get 10 space science packs for a satellite. You can spend these on a few technologies which cost in the range of 10 to 30 space science packs each. Namely, this is where you can unlock tier two modules, Coverex enrichment process, space platforms, asteroid collectors, and a new space science pack recipe. We then see this in screen capture from from the from the technology tree. We now unlock rocket silos at a cost of a thousand science packs. That's interesting that it's a thousand. That's actually quite high. I thought it was going to be a bit lower. I suppose on the other side it is just red, green, and blue, so they are kind of the cheapest science packs. But a thousand is a reasonable kind of a number. We then get the space science pack itself. This is one of the the introduction of that system of having to do an action before you to unlock particular researches. So in this case, in order to get space science packs, we don't use science packs. We have to launch a, a satellite. So you launch a satellite, that unlocks that technology, and then you can start producing your first space science packs. This, this space science first set, where we're only getting 10 per rocket launch, can be used to do the space platform, the asteroid collection, and the space science pack in space. Well, by the looks, I mean, I guess you could just keep going with, with regular satellites and you probably want to be launching them while you build the thing but in order to get the space science platform thruster which is the thing of course which takes you to other planets you can build space platforms without the thrusters so basically the idea is you use that you know your space platform and the asteroid collection and the new space science pack in order to unlock this research because you get you'll explain in a minute you get a lot more science packs space science packs for doing space science in space it's that point they're putting, it's not so much roadblocks, but it's putting in more gradual steps of doing useful things before you can move on to the next phase. The next step is to construct a basic platform capable of collecting and crushing asteroids. This platform can combine crushed asteroids with imported uranium from Nauvis to produce science packs in much higher quantities. With one rocket load of enriched uranium, you can produce 1,000 space science packs in space, which makes it 100 plus times more efficient than sending satellites into space. This is effectively splitting the space science technology into two distinct tiers. But just read the caption, platform producing space science and putting it into the platform hub from where it will be sent to the surface. So just breaking that video out so I can run through it. Uh, we obviously have the alt key on uh, for these. Um, this is the grabber arm and it's taking items out and uh, crushing, putting them into a crusher. Again, it's got this recycling thing, this returning item. 
but this is the icon for clearly crushing iron, crushing carbonic and crushing ice. The excess is obviously being just put in the platform and it looks like a space science pack produced in space uses iron plate, the carbon, uh, the carbon, the carbon, uh, water ice, yeah, and uranium in order to produce the science packs. I guess these could be red herrings and it's not actually using some of these. We only ever see this actually inserting. No, so we never see this actually insert an iron plate. Uh, what we do see it do, which is very interesting, is it puts this is these are filter inserters stack filter inserters and they're both filtered for u238 i always get it wrong wrong around i think it's 238 but notice how this one is that you've got ones going in both directions so clearly when a science pack produces it, it requires the uranium to run but you get some back again now whether you how much you get back whether it does consume it or not or whether it's just used as more like a catalyst or something like that is interesting but this basically, it's a Kovarek style of process where you're sort of putting it in and getting it back out again. Only in this case, you're getting you know space science packs out, which is interesting. Past this point, technologies return back to costing hundreds or thousands of research points each. Normal infinite technologies become affordable, so you can finally get more robot speed upgrades, weapon damage upgrades, or unlock the atomic bomb. This progression is also very useful, so the player first gets to grasp the basics of asteroid processing in a safe environment before they need to build a platform which dares to travel away from Nalvis. Moving space platforms. Space platforms can either be stopped in orbit or moving between two orbits. For movement, the platform has some weight based on its size, number of tiles, which is attempted to be moved by the force of the thrusters. This means the bigger the platform, the more thrusters it needs to move fast. In order to move, the thrusters need to be supplied with fuel and oxidizer, which can be obtained from asteroid resources. Uh, but to read the caption, our platform can now fly, but that isn't without risk. So just looking at this video in, in full screen, uh, we see the thruster here, the, you know, the space engine. And as we all suspected, essentially you're taking water ice, but you're also taking oxidizer or you're creating oxidizer uh, and, you know, fuel essentially. So the water is coming here and in here and, and being melted. The melted water is then going into both of these two. One of these is clearly the oxidizer and one is clearly the fuel. It does, I think, talk about it later. I, I think I've, um, I'm, I'm talking about this before I've read the bit about it. But, but basically, if you think about it from a chemistry point of view, you get, you've, got, you've got carbon. Water can be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. Um, and then you've got an oxidizer, which is, is the metal. So effectively, it's, I believe, if in a sense, essence, it's creating a... Um, a carbohydrate so carbon and hydrogen combined with um, an oxidizer and it's it's using rust i think or something like that so effectively iron plus plus oxygen and it's then effectively then combining those back together as a, a fuel so i don't think it's a realistic recipe as such but it's basically you're taking water carbon and iron and you're turning them into oxidizer and uh, fuel and then the oxidizer and fuel is being used to is being burnt in the thruster uh, to produce thrust. Clearly there's going to be some challenges here around balancing the amount that you get, uh, particularly with the randomness presumably of the asteroids, and that's what they're talking about, about a mechanism for just dumping excess material, because you know, if you've got lots and lots of thrusters and you don't know what asteroids you're going to get, you'll probably end up in a situation where, in essence, you've got way, way too much of a certain resource and you just want to dump it overboard. Asteroids as a threat. The platform must be equipped with defensive turrets because after departing from Nalvis orbit, larger asteroids appear. If unchecked, these can heavily damage and eventually completely destroy the platform. On destruction, the bigger asteroids split into multiple smaller ones, eventually turning into harmless chunks. So we've just got a video here showing that. This is... I mean, everyone knows what Asteroids is, don't they? I mean, it's one of the very first sort of computer games, an arcade game, I think, to start with, but... If, you know, if you've never heard of it, look it up. But it's, it's we're basically going to be able to play asteroids in Factorio because that's how asteroids works. The game, you have a big asteroid, and then when you you know shoot it, it breaks into two smaller asteroids, and then you, you shoot that, and it breaks into you know four tiny asteroids, and then you have to get rid of them. But basically, in Factorio, you break these into the smaller chunks, and it's these chunks that the grabber arms can collect. 
and they also the previous said once they're into these tiny chunks they just they, those don't they can't damage damage the platform so so yeah this is um kind of fun building rules everything on space platforms is done via the remote view no coincidence it was the topic of the last friday facts some entities can't be constructed on platforms at all for example robots so the platform remains a belt logistic puzzle chests to prevent excessive buffering vehicles including trains and spidertrons for various reasons burner entities for a bit of realism as there's no atmosphere in space space platforms cannot have holes in tiles and their surface must be contiguous if a tile that bridges two sections is destroyed the section without connection to the hub is destroyed as well so this video shows the player character building part of the space platform and the point about it being contiguous is if you notice when it gets to this point here because you would have created a, a hole in the space platform which isn't allowed it instead flips it to a, a blueprint uh, and then once the, that hole is filled it fills that in so this is what it's saying about you know there's no bots doing this and you know you're not manually laying it down so the blueprint is just automatically filled in if the resources are available that's how space platform building works so here as i say you'll notice when it completes this bit here ping those for those fire into place and say so that's basically what it's saying so you can't have holes and if you accidentally make it so that there is a hole it flips it to a blueprint and then fills it in when you've filled in the hole power on space platforms power is automatically distributed by space platform tiles so you don't need to build electric poles or substations on the platform allowing for some even denser belt designs the platform gets power primarily from solar panels but power is still rather limited on the platform as every solar panel adds to, si to the size of the platform which increases its weight and slows it down this means efficiency modules are now much more useful than before. Solar panel output is generally greater in space than on planets, but most planets are further away from the star than Nervis, and eventually we get to travel to really distant places where solar panels are almost useless. This leaves room for nuclear power being completely viable to be used on space platforms, though it requires a significant amount of water or ice to be gathered from asteroids. So the next picture it shows is, is just illustrating nuclear power being used on a platform. So we have a nuclear reactor, heat exchanger, and a turbine, uh, and it's collecting water ice in order to you know, melt it into water so that it can be used in the turbine and, and power the platform. It does still have a solar panel in there, which is presumably you know, for when the power kind of runs out and you, you need you know, just enough power to run the arm and the um, inserters. Quality implications. Quality of entities is extremely influential on the platform since if its effects basically multiply against each other. Higher quality chemical plants produce fuel faster while consuming the same amount of power. Higher quality solar panels means you need to use less space so the thrusters have an easier time moving the platform. Higher quality asteroid collectors have more arms for catching asteroid chunks. Higher quality furnaces and assembling machines can craft ammo faster. Higher quality gun turrets have increased range, so they get more time to shoot the asteroids before they would hit the platform. In general, higher quality entities have more health, so the platform can tank more hits if an asteroid slips through. Long story short, if you have a few higher quality items, it might make a lot more sense to use them on the platform. This is what a platform with legendary components could look like. So here we have the, the full video um, you know, in, in shot. Uh, you lose a lot of the detail at this view but basically this is a full platform you know it's got gun turrets at the front shooting the asteroids that are coming in grab arms grabbing the resources processing them and then turning it into fuel and and what have you more ammo etc it's dumping material out the side so it's kind of showing everything we've been talked about in this thing notice how it's spotty in terms of its its flight power because presumably it takes a while to build up enough resource to run all of these thrusters so this is probably not a particularly efficient design uh, i guess on average you know it must be okay if they're, 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 they're presenting it but yes this is the type of thing you can build it took a minute showing this because presumably these are quality items it doesn't show the quality icon so maybe the quality icon doesn't show unless you have alt on it is interesting to see that accumulators are worth having on the platform to sort of even out that power demand I guess I mean I, I would have assumed there was no night cycle for the, for the platforms you know they're always in the sun so having accumulators 
maybe that's because this platform is going you know a long way from the Nowvis, so you know it can build up a bit of power that it can use later on. But we do notice these. I mean, these are the assemblers are going like the absolute clappers, and they've got obviously no beacons. They won't have prod modules in. So presumably that's the point: is that if you use the high quality items on your space platforms, you get this insane productivity from only two um, assemblers. What well, I think this does, because this is like symmetrical, this platform, and it makes me wonder that they've not shown us using blueprints to build this. So I'm hoping we can use blueprints, and therefore you can just like flip a a. a you know, a blueprint and effectively have it double sided because it'd be a bit of a pain to exactly recreate this on two sides. Because, I mean, you don't have to, you know, if you think, you know, board cubes and stuff, there's no air in space, so you don't need them to be aerodynamic or anything. But if it's going to be nice to have them as being, you know, symmetrical things. The process. The platforms you can see here today achieve quite accurately what Kovarix's initial idea was. However, we have spent a lot of time finding the right path to get there. The rocket logistics and space platform mechanics were changed very significantly many times. We weren't afraid to rework systems related to the platform in order to make the experience of building them as good as we can imagine. Apart from the technical mechanics, we've created interesting recipes which don't get too complicated. At the start, we had a rough idea of what we wanted to achieve. Somehow craft ammo and something for thrust thrusters. And Arundel has laid out a creative set of recipes. Since then, I, V, have done a lot of balancing passes and tweaks and we've got something quite solid now. As you're probably already used to by now, the graphics you can see in this post have taken a lot of effort to make. Though this time, it exceeded the trend by quite a bit and the space platform has been a real team effort more than anything before it. From the surface of the space platform tiles and decoratives done by Lucas, space platform transitions, thrusters, crushers, and the hub cargo bays done by Jaroslaw, asteroid collectors and starfield shader done by Jersey, to the asteroids done by Fergal, with all the concept art from Erendal, and oversight from Albert with V. We can safely say close to everybody from the graphics department has been involved, and pretty much every one of these tasks has tested our sanity. Conclusion. It is an undeniable fact that the factory must grow, always. But sometimes it just tr transcends to the point where it seems like nothing matters anymore and all of the challenges have been trivialized. Survival, space constraints, items feeling like they have any value, and so on. With the rules of how space platforms are built, we can enjoy these feelings of puzzles to be solved for quite a bit further. While building a platform can be made easier by sending more platforms and tiles into space and giving yourself more built room to build, it is always motivating to try to keep the platform compact so it can fly as fast as possible. Space platforms can specialise in different tasks, so it can be motivating to optimise them for different design goals. You can aim to make a huge platform that can load thousands of items, or a small platform with capacity sacrificed for speed. Would you like a minimal platform so you could get to that first planet as soon as possible? Or do you perhaps fancy a gigantic platform that can craft its own components mid-flight? There are quite a few things to try, but more about that some other day. It's obvious to compare Space Age's pla space platforms to space exploration spaceships. While they're both chunks of metal traversing space, the gameplay is very different. Thanks to the asteroid processing, space platforms can operate completely independently without the need to refuel, and it also automatically means they are little or gigantic space factories where space really matters. Due to modding API limitations, uh, SpaceX's spaceships get rather complicated to automate with combinators and so on. In contrast to space platforms, automatic scheduling is literally as simple as automating trains. All in all, creating your first automated space platform could be quite easy, but there is a lot of room for making something really big and complex too. As always, thank you for reading and let us know what you think on the usual platforms. So just on this one, it was nice to see that the thing in the middle on when they revealed the space platforms did turn out to be the sort of core part of the space platform. Uh, and there's quite a lot of detail on sort of how how this will operate. Um, it sounds like it's been quite, um, I wouldn't say simplified, but um, it's a simpler way of doing things compared to space exploration. And one I think that's probably going to suit a lot more players. Um, and these silo things have got, kind of confirmed what we suspected about, you know, that that's where rockets will go in. It's interesting, it's not really telling us how many cargo slots the rocket has. I'm assuming the rocket has um, a lot more cargo slots than the base rocket. If it's just got one cargo slot, 
sending these up to space is going to be really expensive. Uh, I'm also slightly puzzled, I must say, about, I guess because you want to build lots of remote platforms, but it does mention that the player is transported via the silos, uh, and we'll come on to the building later on. But the implication, to, I, don't, I don't know, I don't understand the implication of whether, so for example, you know, uh, repair packs, you could carry them in your inventory and just deposit them in the silo yourself, unless that's not allowed, and the only way of to get things into the silo is through the filtering. And as I say, it's possibly because, you know, you want to be able to build lots and lots of platforms remotely. Um, so you need these items going up through an or some sort of automated system. But you, yeah, you as the player have got quite a large inventory. So it's a little puzzling why some of these small volume items you can't just transport yourself. We'll have to see how that works. And as I say, I really hope that the cargo, the rocket has a lot higher capacity because if you're just delivering five or six inserters, that's really expensive. Um, I'm assuming the rocket is a lot cheaper uh, now, but that's really expensive um, to, to send that, you know, into space just to provide, you know, say three transport belts and two inserters. That, that's quite expensive. I've Presumably you set a, a rocket silo such that you know, whatever rockets are built in it always have the same filters, or in this case, it'll explain it, it, it requests. So just as a uh, follow up to the, the points about this, this, you know, silo and filtering and all this sort of stuff, this seems like a very sensible solution. It's like a little bit confusing in that you got to remember that a platform has to be in orbit around a planet to be requesting from its logistics network. Um, and then that the idea is that the platform, you know, you can ghost build, say, an inserter, and that gets added to a request for the rocket to send an inserter and the rocket requests it from the uh, logistics network. So essentially it just automates the whole thing. It does slightly beg the question as to whether what the limits are on that. Um, it feels a little like sending an entire rocket into space to provide one inserter, you know, because you forgot it. It seems a bit excessive. But then again, I, I am basing that on the cost, current cost of a rocket. So maybe rockets are a lot cheaper and it just works. It's not mentioned in any anywhere at all about like returning rockets or anything like that. It's not clear to me, you know, because these these space platforms are going to be traveling back and forth between planets. Um, and it talks a lot about getting items to the platform. It doesn't really talk about getting items off the platform. So does a rocket sit, you know, stay in the space platform and await, you know, it can is then available to send back? And how do you manage that? You know, if you send five rockets up, do all of them get stored in, on the platform? Do they all disappear? If so, how do you send rockets up? Have you got to put rockets into rockets to send up to the platform? That part of it isn't clear to me. And I say I couldn't see anything in this that really explains that how that side of it works there must be a way of doing that because you know the whole point is you're transferring things between planets you, you know you're bringing your space science packs back from another planet to build you know the next phase of spy science so you must be able to get things off of platforms but it doesn't really explain that so i don't know if it's just a new mechanic mm -hmm. or it's just meant to be obvious that you do it with the rockets that you send up in which case a bit like space exploration, you know, do you only just, does each silo have one rocket and it just goes back and forth? Or, you know, how does that work in terms of, you know, those things? Do they have a, you know, a lifetime on them and you can use them 10 times or, or what have you? Do you just have to fuel it every time it goes back and forth? I say it doesn't really quite answer those. So it'd be interesting to find out exactly how that side of it works. One thing that is interesting to note is that you have a separate, um, filter inserter an ultra it fil well stack filter inserter on each of these and it's returning items to the um, belt so i'm not sure the items that come out appear to be smaller but i don't know if that's an optical illusion or you know it's just the way it's showing it I, i'm not 100 percent sure what that means as a mechanic i think it means that Sometimes when you crush them, you get the item back and effectively it's like a, it could be effectively, the, you know, the effect of um, 
production modules, maybe something like that. Uh, but it feels like, and there are a couple of other hints to this, that, you know, the Coverex way of doing things where you get items back again. I think that might be something you can either research or it's just an effect of the thing, because what it's effectively doing here is it's taking in these items, crushing them, but then getting the item back out again. So that's a bit weird. It's a bit like these. I don't know whether these are the new production. It did mention in a previous five years facts, basically, that there was some kind of new production science, uh, you know, a new science for getting extra production. And I'm wondering if that's what's going on here, that there's a new way of getting free items or that it returns the pure resource effectively rather than so normal productivity modules. You know, you get extra of the produced item. And maybe this new system, this new extra productivity gives you the original item back again. So when you crush, you know, one iron uh, asteroid, or maybe there's a 10% chance of getting the original resource back again. But of course, it will sit in an output lock, which is why you have to then, you know, send it back out again in a, with a filter inserter. And I say, I don't know whether that's, you know, what's going on here, because it's interesting that it's being done on all of these. It's not being done here. There is no return thing, but yes, it just to me, it seems to suggest that there's a new mechanic that is like a return of original resource. And that's how we get that extra productivity. You know, you're not just getting 10% extra of the processed item. You're getting one tenth of your original material back again. And then, of course, so it's it's more additive effectively. But I say it could just be that this, the science and the asteroids, maybe this is a mechanic just for these, that they have a return mechanism where a percentage is returned back to you or for you know uranium, you don't actually use it. You're just using it as a catalyst to do that. And obviously we have the comment here about um, the manual process. So switching off the automate, you know, including the silo in the um, automated system is optional. So it's, it's with a checkbox. And you can turn it off and you can just do it manually yourself anyway. And that's and then it says it's basically required in some of the yet undisclosed space age content. I've speculated before about what is this last planet for? Um, because, you know, it looks like you need all of the previous science packs to unlock it, but it's not telling you what you get from doing this final research. You know, what do you do on this final planet if it's not another science pack? I'm wondering, therefore, I've, I've speculated before that maybe we're building some way of getting home. You know, it's a big, big spaceship that, that is the final goal for the, the game now. And you build that so that you can fly home. And that makes me wonder if part of the idea with this, where it's talking about that you can manually fill up rockets, basically, or wait for them to be full. That's part of it that you want to basically when you do this for, for some reason, you know, having large volumes of stuff that you were that you take there manually is is useful i can't really see what other thing might be worth doing the other i mean what i did think is maybe some of these pleasant platforms that sorry these planets are really hostile and so you'd want to have loads and loads of stuff that you manually stockpile rather than having it you know maybe you know you want a thousand inserters on, on your new planet so you can build really quickly so rather than have them being sent up you know piecemeal one or two you know, for your um, individual platforms, you can just stop. I did it again and just stockpile them into the single rocket silo. And then when you're ready, you fly over there and you build up really quickly. That that might be one thing. But I say what this is, is is going to be quite interesting, I think. It mentions a couple of things that we've kind of speculated about and certainly I talked about in the last Friday Facts. One of the things we obviously saw on, on all of these and we, you know, I made the point that these could just be for flavour. They don't necessarily mean anything. They may not have gameplay effects. It's just to give you flavour, but equally they could have some impact. And as we saw before, we know that there's different power being produced in space and, and on, on the planet's surface. We would expect that, you know, that makes sense as a very simple change. But it's also saying that solar power is going to be different on different planets. It's also kind of confirming that the other planets are further away. So now this appears to be the closest to the sun and every planet we go to is further away. The specific thing it says is eventually we get to travel really travel to really distant places where solar panels are almost useless. Distant places is an interesting way of phrasing it. There was a, on this um, particular the space map, as we know, you know, this isn't 
exactly how it works in the game so that any speculation was very much speculation but we had an extra icon here that was clearly being covered by compilatron a, a different thing what this could be is asteroid fields so you're able to go to an asteroid field because it mentions in an earlier part that different resources are going to be able to be generated by the crushers through doing research so having specific asteroid fields where it, you know, they're just jam-packed with the big asteroids and it makes it worth doing a mining operation and being able to go back and forth between those asteroid fields. Perhaps there's some exclusive resource out in the asteroid fields rather than just you know more copper sort of thing. It does mention that there are new resources. It kind of says that. It doesn't quite say it, but it kind of hints at it. This could be an asteroid field. This could be that you're going to a specific far distant asteroid field. If you know anything about our solar system, there's the, in fact, I could just look it up. So basically, this is the solar system in the middle here. So that's the sun. Uh, you have several asteroid belts in our solar system. One is the Kuiper belt. Um, I think, is that the one? Yeah, that's the one in the plane, basically. They're like the plane of the all of the planets. But then way, 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 way out. So like a, you know, very distant away from the sun, we have the Oort cloud, which is just millions and millions and billions and trillions of asteroids of all sorts of size and dimension and, and what have you. This makes it look like it's quite close, but it is ridiculously far away, which could be what we, we go and mine. So in order to get the resources to build whatever it is, this final thing we're building, we may need to go out to the Oort cloud to get you know special resources and therefore, I mean, the, the, the amount of sunlight that these get is just infinitesimal. And that's why you need to be doing nuclear power on your um, space platforms, because you need to get out there to mine this special resource, for example, and then bring it back so that you can process it. And as I say, my, my current theory, my speculation, um, is that it's this planet that we build. You know, this could be way out, and so is therefore the best planet to use for building our spaceship home so that's my speculation it could obviously be like a you know a portal or something like that it could be a wormhole that we're building there's all sorts of options and that could be another thing we could be building a wormhole out here or something like that but the point is that we're going to have to go far away to get some stuff and that would also be you know they're saying about the manual one that you know where you can just load it up you don't want that one flying off you know willy-nilly you want to be able to control it a bit better and just sort of say right well i want this you know space platform to go when it's got you know ten thousand of this resource that you need to do the mining uranium or something so you have a silo that fills up with uranium and when it's full and you hold it manually or when you decide to do it you send it and off it goes and it processes you know it, you know it comes back in five hours with loaded up with the special resource sort of thing so that's what it that's what the vibe it's giving for me one of the things that is um interesting is the use of is is this point about efficiency modules the point of efficiency modules of course is to reduce power consumption so the point they're making is that they've basically introduced a reason for you to actually start using efficiency modules in the base game they're virtually pointless you use them to make a couple of um or is it just the one power armor are they even used in power armor anymore i think they are but basically, you know, efficiency modules are just useless. And this is clearly a reason to make them, because if you're having a space platform go a really long distance, more on that in a second. But if you're having a, a space platform, you know, going a really long distance, you want to minimize the amount of power consumption, particularly since adding more power, so more solar panels, more nuclear power, would require a bigger platform. And although it's a little odd how they're phrasing it bigger platforms have a bigger a mass they could talk about weight but it's really mass and therefore have um, high momentum higher inertia and that's kind of a better way to think about the platforms being slower they, they accelerate slower because there's much more inertia you know much more mass to move uh, so you know you want them to be quick well you can, you can make a choice can't you you can say do i want a massive platform that's really slow or do i want a really fast platform it, it mentions that later on but the point is you know this is an option for making like platforms that are more efficient that you massively reduce the power consumption by using efficiency modules and particularly it's discouraging you from using speed and, and productivity because they in, in, you know consume more power 
so you reduce the amount of power it gives us a reason to actually do things with efficiency modules and then you can use this to go to a, a more distant planet or you know just be more efficient uh, in the transport so it's really great that we're getting lots of different options I know I, I make this point a lot. I love the uh, the artwork in, in Factorio, the style of it and what it looks like. This space stuff is just amazing looking. It looks like, you know, it's been sort of kit bashed together and thrown together and, you know, that it's actually something that could be built, as it were, you know, from bits and pieces. And, you know, you've got these these sort of, uh, you know, what you do you call them observation bays or places where the player character could, you know, could feasibly be. I love this satellite, that satellite dish in particular just looks gorgeous. The engine, the thrusters just look amazing. I love, I hadn't noticed this little bit before. It's some kind of like, almost like pistony part that's kind of doing an injection or something. Uh, you obviously got these springs to keep it attached to the, to the thing. It just looks amazing. So yeah, just really, really awesome looking graphics. Yeah, it's, it's more like a, you know, it's meant to be a rocket engine, but it looks more like a, a proper engine, like a, a uh, you know like a turbine or something like that just brilliant i love the effect they've done with the the fire as well you know the the smoke and fire coming we'll see that in a bit better on a later one but uh, it's really effective oh and just to show you from here um you know the cloud effect on the or the smoke effect on the um thrusters is is just awesome i love this it looks amazing so yeah, unfortunately, I think this might be putting paid to my theory about level two bots. Um, certainly we're not getting bots in space. I confess this is probably my only point of disappointment. Not not the not the bots, sorry. The the point of disappointment is that it doesn't appear that we as a character are going to be able to like fly around in space because everything is done in terms of building the platforms and et cetera, et cetera, with using remote view. I'm not, I'm not, I, I really wish we could get, you know, fly around in space. I think that is one of the things that SpaceX adds, adds that's really cool. Maybe it was just too much of a pain and, um, you know, there's the possibility of flying off, you know, and getting lost in out in the, the, the void. But I say, I'm just a little bit disappointed in that. It's fine. But as I say, it's just, I say, it would have been nice to be able to just go and properly build them yourself. Um, I suppose part of the point there is that you're going to be building so many of these platforms that doing it all remotely makes the most sense. And then why would you do it manually, as it were? But there you go. But yeah, it looks like level two bots or space bots are not a thing. So, <laughs> so it's all 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 manual graft. It's interesting that this is the solution. There's always that question in Factorio because you're generating all this pollution and you're, you know, you're antagonizing the natives and, you know, native wildlife and eradicating and all that sort of stuff of, of whether you're the bad guy, basically, you know, are we the bad guys not gift type of thing. So it's interesting that this is basically us polluting space, which is <laughs> kind of confirmation that we're kind of a bit of a bit of a hazard to the local local style system. So. Um, so, yeah. OK, overall thoughts then. Uh, just another one. It's going to be difficult <laughs> to find one of these where I'm not just, you know, big thumbs up and, and loving it. There are a few uh, questions in my mind about how this works. It seems to confirm quite a lot of stuff that I was speculating about with the previous ride effects. So, for example, here, you know, these are the platforms and space platform. What I think that does now is it create it pops you up to a view in in the orbit of whatever planet you're on where you can just start building the space platform and then your rockets just launch and you know deliver that stuff you have to start off with obviously the starter thing so maybe it launches the starter thing and that's what you know uh, will be your your basis for creating your platform but clearly you just build the platforms using this add space platform and if you want to go to that platform you know you click on it and that takes you there and you can add to it and what have you and this is the icon for if it's traveling between different planets um, this one here is clearly the one where this player is just building the space science uh, it's just talked about and how that's different but yeah it kind of confirms a lot of things as i say it doesn't specifically say how you get items off a platform I say, is that the rocket that you send up and what happens with multiple rockets and is it one rocket per platform and, and how that works isn't entirely clear. Again, I think when I was speculating about this, I mentioned that I think this is a, a load of space rockets, you know, space silos rather, uh, rocket silos rather. 
and that that's where you know it's they're blasting off you know to go to these different platforms as needed and it does explain why there's no like control panel and no whole load of logistics things these are literally just I'll zoom right in rockets and now rockets have a logistics request system so a rocket can request up the items that it wants and that's why there's no saying about is it bot delivered well yes it's bot delivered but it's not going to a load of chests it's going to the rocket itself so it's nice to have that confirmed that's how it works but I say overall you know just really big thumbs up this really looks like it's going to be a lot of fun you know I love the way this platform itself looks and these things as well they just look really really cool it reminds me again I, I said this I think it was in one of the, the when the platforms were revealed it reminds me a lot of Akira you know the graphic style of Akira with these big pipes moving around and you know conduits and all this sort of stuff it feels very um, Akira-esque um, you know sort of cyberpunky but, but I guess because it's factorial sort of cyberpunk meets steampunk really or diesel punk rather and I say this mechanism for do you get the rockets back? You know, do they just can they just travel back and forth between them? It's a real question because this doesn't this, as I, as I was saying in a, a previous one, looks like, you know, this is where the rockets can land or this is where maybe the rockets are launched and this is where they land. You know, they just plop into that hole and they pop out again. Uh, you know, they fire out of that. And it's interesting. We've not seen I say we've not seen any of the graphics for that. So to me, I, I think actually that's because the graphics aren't done and at the moment it would just be grey box and they don't kind of don't want to show us that but yeah if that's the case does this then you know accept rockets back or is there a new rocket receiver or something like that that's how it works in SpaceX but this you know it doesn't look like it can receive a rocket so is that how it works I think we're missing a little component there I think there's something extra I don't know if there's a size limit for the platforms it kind of implies there isn't which is interesting i'm guessing there is an effective limit in the sense that presumably as you add more thrusters there's got to be sort of a power to weight thing they talk about weight being the mechanic to like kind of limit the size of the platforms you know the bigger it is the heavier it is so the slower it moves so presumably each thruster doesn't achieve you know it's a negative curve if you say i mean you couldn't just have a platform that is literally all thrusters and overcome the size issue you know there's no positive you know advantage to more because thrusters themselves will have weight um, so you couldn't just have a platform that's like you know a billion tiles long and the thrusters overcome the weight at some point the num the size of the platform overcomes the ability of thrusters to thrust and that acts as your maximum size I'm guessing it's probably huge like enormous um, but yeah, it sounds like it's a diminishing returns thing. Like the more thrusters and stuff you put on, the less speed you gain for each thruster. So you get to a point where it's just become so ridiculously expensive that there's no point doing it. That sounds like they've how they've balanced it, but not sure. Can I think of anything else? I don't think there's anything else hidden. I like how it's got the patterning as well. Look, it's got the pattern of you know, in you know, metal becomes heat, um, like treated as uh, you know. Um, thing you can see, even see that on there just amazing I hope you enjoyed today's Friday Facts video and might consider coming back for another one if you want to chat about the latest Factorio Friday Facts then you can find me live streaming Factorio every Saturday over on my Twitch channel at Justice. thanks for watching cheers